What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and learn about iconic Canadian foods that you need to try before you die, according to this video. Okay, I mean, if I'm, uh, if, I, if I'm dying, if I'm hit by a bus and I'm lying in the gutter, dying, I'll make sure to uh, tell the ambulance or whoever's picking me up on my deathbed to uh, make sure they stuff this Canadian food down my bleeding throat. <laughs> is, that a, is that enough of a grave image for you to start out this video? But uh, seriously, I, I honestly don't have any idea what you would consider iconic Canadian food. Um, Americans are well aware of maple syrup, you know? That's, uh, that's pretty much what we think about when we think about Canadian food, is put maple syrup on stuff, make it flavored maple syrup, probably freeze the maple syrup and lick it like ice cream or something. You know, maybe I'm totally wrong, but maybe I'm totally right. You ever think about that? Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Before I go on for too long, let's uh, check out some iconic Canadian food. And this, I mean, this looks tasty, whatever this is. Does fried dough topped with peanut butter, chocolate, and Reese's Pieces sound absolutely delicious to you? Yes. What about a perfectly made bagel with a surprising hint of sweetness? Yeah. If you said yes, then you might just be a fan of Canadian cuisine. I'm a fan. Okay. <laughs> all right. I mean, are all... Is this common Canadian food or is this kind of like snack food or... We, I don't know yet. One of the most famous Canadian culinary exports is undoubtedly poutine. Poutine. This is like the only thing I know about. Uh, only because I've, I've checked out some other Canadian stuff before this with other reactions. I am aware of poutine. Uh, it looks fantastic. Looks delicious. This does not exist in any capacity in America, ever, anywhere. But once you kind of accept what it's made of, it's like cheese and gravy and fries. Yeah, that sounds great. Like, it sounded super strange at first, uh, just because those things are not really put together, but it's kind of like a potato, fries with cheese. You could do that, put gravy on it. Sounds delicious, actually. This is probably, like, something I would absolutely try. This Quebecois dish consists of french fries topped with cheese curds and gravy. Cheese curds. Hmm. Does that change my opinion? What is a cheese, cheese curd? Uh, it, Hmm. See, I'm not a big cheese head, if, uh, if that makes sense. Cheese curd. What? How does the cheese stay together like that? Curdled milk. Ugh. No, I'm just kidding. Even though that sounds disgusting. Uh, I mean, it's just like any cheese, right? Even if it's... In, I mean, all cheese is kind of curdled in some sense to make it solid. And I eat solid cheese. I approve of it. I'll deal with it. The demand for poutine is so immense that major fast food chains like McDonald's and yeah. Burger King have included it on their Canadian menus. Yeah, I'm not surprised poutine isn't a thing in America, because it is, it's absolutely not. And I feel like it needs to be. And there's even an annual Major League Poutine Eating Contest. Oh, yeah. Poutine's origins are hotly debated, with many restaurants understandably wanting to claim to be the spot that started the sensation. Oh. But it just seems wrong to fight about this when there's so much deep-fried, gravy-covered, oh, cheesy wow. goodness to go around. Wow, wow, wow. Americans would love this. They'd eat this up. Oh, my God. Uh, so this was invented in a... Canadian? Can... can <laughs> Canadia? This was invented in Canadia? This was, <laughs> that's what happens when you're in between saying Canadian and Canada. Canadia. The, the, I need to go to the, this mythical island of Canadia someday where it's made of poutine there, I believe. Poutine has gone from a Quebec snack bar favorite to a standout dish in many restaurants. Okay. Almost every country in the world has some version of a meat pie. Britain. Meat pie. See, she says every country has some version of a meat pie, yet America does not have a version of a meat pie. And honestly, the phrase meat pie kind of grosses me out. Although I like meat and I like pie, but meat pie, all of our pies are either a dessert, cho very chocolatey, or they're fr fruity, like cherry pie. 
there's no meat pie ever. It's very rare. Um, it's not completely unheard of, but yeah, you get it. It has steak and kidney and empanadas. Kid, kidney? Like kidney the organ? Kidney? No, 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 no. world has some no. version of a meat pie. Britain has steak and kidney, and empanadas are the stuffed pastry of choice throughout Latin America. Americans, of course, are big fans of a good old-fashioned chicken pot pie. <laughs> I mean, that is a gross exaggeration. Uh, chicken pot pie, I mean, in certain parts of the United States, at certain times of the year, maybe Thanksgiving, or if grandma will whip you one up if it's kind of a family recipe, but to say that Americans are, are chowing down on chicken pot pies, that's just not true. As for Canadians, they love a delicious tortere. Tortere is a baked meat pie that consists of a bottom layer of pie pastry and a meat okay. filling center. Then it's topped with another covering of pie pastry before being baked in an oven. The meats okay. used for tortere are traditionally pheasant, rabbit, moose, or pigeon. The more contemporary- Oh my goodness. See, I was gonna say this sounds fine. Just bread and meat in the shape of a pie. But Americans don't eat any other meats. And I don't agree with this. I think we should branch out, by the way. But we only eat cow, pig, chicken. You know, uh, never rabbit, pheasant, moose. What, what did she say? We never eat those animals. Uh, so I just wouldn't be, I wouldn't be used to that. But I, I would give it a try. Used for tortere are traditionally pheasant, rabbit, moose, or pigeon. Wow, yeah. Uh, Americans don't eat those meats. So that makes it interesting in like a totally different way. The more contemporary versions can include pork, beef, or veal. It's traditionally oh, served during the holidays, which makes sense as the spice mix includes- Oh, it is a holiday dish. Kind of like the chicken pot pie. Uh, <laughs> that I never have. Um, okay, so this is like a holiday meat pie. Includes cinnamon, clove, allspice, and nutmeg. Our favorite okay. tortier related tradition is that it's meant to be shared with family and friends. Hmm. It doesn't get much more Canadian than that, eh? Wow, that's beautiful. Oh, she's saying A. Wait, I thought Canadians... <laughs> I watched another video about Canadian stereotypes. You're not supposed to say A that much, as much as Americans think. But uh, no, this is breaking every notion, preconceived notion I have. Okay. A? It's hard to think of Canadian food and not have maple syrup pop Oh, maple syrup is on the list? <laughs> what? It's a- it's a liquid. It's a drink. <laughs> it's not a food. Actually, syrup. Wow. Is that a liquid? Or- I mean, it's not a- it's not a drink. Unless you're kinda- unless you want to put it in your cup and drink it. Then it is a drink. Alright, it's a food. I'll- I'll give it to you. Pop into your head. After all, the country's flag features the maple leaf as the bright and beaming center of attention, and mm. deservedly so. As of 2020, Canada is reportedly the world's leading producer and exporter of maple products. Yeah, Americans definitely think of maple syrup when they think of Canada, and I think kind of it's justified after seeing some of these things about how much Canadians do eat maple syrup. And uh, Americans love maple syrup. Uh, we just don't have it all the time? I don't know how I would explain it. Um, Americans have so many different things for breakfast, but when they do have pancakes, they have syrup, maple syrup. So it's fairly common. I'd say it's absolutely common. Accounting for 79% of the global market, maple syrup- 79% of the world's maple syrup is from Canada? My God. Syrup and maple sugar products are created from the gathering and cooking of maple tree sap, which is okay. collected by the tapping of the trees. These techniques were yeah. originally discovered by indigenous peoples and later adopted by French settlers. Maple syrup is so prevalent in Canada. Look at that little maple leaf shaped bottle. I wish we had bottles like that for our syrup. That just makes it even better. That's a nice bottle. That it sneaked its way into many otherwise traditionally unsweetened foods and beverage items, such as tea bags and protein oh. powder. Of oh. course, its hand in the dessert industry is also significant, with treats yeah. like maple cookies and maple candies readily available for Canucks with a sweet- What are they doing? Wait, they're rolling- yeah, they're doing the thing where you roll the syrup in snow and- and chew on it? Okay. I mean, <laughs> when in Canada, I guess. Put your maple syrup 
in a bunch of dirty snow on the ground and lick it off sticks? Okay. Tooth. What's the matter? Your mama didn't teach you how to chug? Come on, Thorn. Come on, Thorn. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> The beaver tail huh. is a Canadian national treasure. From really? British Colum beaver tail. Columbia to Nova Scotia, so many Canadians have a soft spot for this chewy treat made from hand-stretched wheat dough. While the traditional ver- I mean, Americans love pastries. They go nuts for pastries. I go nuts for pastries. <laughs> These uh, donuts and whatnot. And this kind of looks like one. Version is topped with a simple dusting of cinnamon and sugar. The beaver okay. tail has evolved over the years into more than just a dessert, depending on where you are in Canada. I mean, that looks good right there. Whatever that right there, if that's a beaver tail, uh, that looks good. Americans would definitely like that. For example, in Vancouver, you can get a salmon tail, which substitutes the standard sweet topping for a combination of cream cheese and capers. In mm. Capers? What's a caper? Capers. Capers. Oh, capers. Correct me, Google. Is this what it means? Is this what it means? It's a, a perennial plant bearing rounded fleshy leaves? Is there any way that's it? I mean, you, it's, this says you can eat them. Okay, maybe that's what a caper is. I don't know. Mont Tremblon, you can pick up a ham and cheese tail or a steak top tail. A okay. specialty of Halifax is the- Oh my God, look at this. Look at this thing. That looks good. That right there. Give me that. I want it. Triple trip <laughs> beaver tail, which is topped with peanut butter, chocolate, and Reese's Pieces. Okay. There's even a popular Canadian restaurant. That would be the most popular one, by the way, in America. By far, Canadians open up a store in America, sell these things, uh, call them beaver tails. It's a fun name. Americans will love it. You'll be rich. You're welcome. Chain called Beaver Tails, which has been serving up this iconic indulgence since 1978. Cool. The butter tart is one sugary sweet dessert that certainly deserves its highly esteemed reputation. Butter tart. Uh, is it a buttery tart by chance? A traditional Canadian butter tart is a tiny pastry with a wonderfully runny or semi-solid center. The filling is made from butter, sugar, syrup, and egg. Then That sounds good. Poured into a pastry shell and baked until the filling is semi-solid or runny. That sounds good. I would eat that. I would eat that right there in one bite. Depending on your preference. And then it's finished off with a crunchy top. As okay. noted by food bloggers of Canada, the women's auxiliary of the Royal Vict- What's this called again? It's a butter tart. Canadian foods have such fun names. Way more fun than American stuff. Poutine, beaver tail. Uh, what is this tart? Butter tart. Yeah, that's some names I can get behind. Uh, seriously. Victoria Hospital Cookbook contains the first documented recipe for butter tarts. Oh. Published in 1900 in Barrie, Ontario, this appears to be the source that started it all. Okay. The original versions were made with maple sugar, freshly churned butter, and dried fruit, such as raisins mm. or currants. Is it a rite of passage to have a butter tart made with that, orig that original recipe for butter tarts? That, that very first recipe? Is that like a... <laughs> you become an adult when you finally can capture that butter tart and eat it. They gained popularity in the 1920s, and the rest is beautifully buttery history. Mm. Much like the butter tart, the Nanaimo bar is yet another deliciously decadent Canadian dessert. Nanaimo bar. A lot of desserts here. I'm not upset with that. I'm not. <laughs> but this should have been like iconic Canadian desserts, right? Uh, not just foods. Uh, Nanaimo bar. All the, most of these look pretty delicious. I mean, the thing is, how wrong can you go with desserts, you know? You, you can't really screw dessert up. I mean, <laughs> at least that's the American's philosophy, anyway. Constructed of a graham cracker crumb and shredded coconut base, a custard-flavored butter icing in the center, and a chocolate ganache on top. Oh, this is kind of fancy. Oh, those look very fancy. Is this fancy? Has a fancy name, Nanaimo Bar. They look good. The Nanaimo Bar is a three-layered, no-bake delight that's famous throughout the country. Oh. The Nanaimo No-bake. Yeah, Americans are into that. Into that as well, the no-bake stuff. Okay. The bar is so popular that its origins are hotly disputed, as everyone oh. wants a piece of the coconutty credit. According huh. to legend, a group of friends from Nanaimo, British Columbia. 
Oh, it's a place. Okay. <laughs> uh, that actually sounded like it was from China or Japan or something, given, like, you know, just the way things sound phonetically, words, sounded like maybe uh, an Asian word or something, Nanaimo. But no, it's a, it's a place in Canada. Who knew? Found the recipe in the Vancouver Sun. At the time, it was known as chocolate fridge cake, and the friends changed the name in honor of their hometown. The recipe made its way throughout the- Wait, it was just a bunch of kids, uh, making these and sticking them in the fridge? Found the recipe in the Vancouver Sun. At the time, it was known as chocolate fridge cake, and the okay. friends changed the name in honor of their hometown. Okay. The recipe made its way throughout the province's communities, circulated by housewives and home bakers. This yeah. story's validity is unconfirmed, but it has a nice ring to it, so we'll- Man, this stuff must have been good, if that story has any truth. These kids just spread the word about it and it caught on like wildfire. Became a Canadian national dessert, practically. Happily spread it. The bars enjoyed a rise to fame during Expo 86 in Vancouver. And oh. they've been a national jewel ever since. Okay. People there seem to take the Nanaimo bar very seriously. <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean, can you take a Nanaimo bar too seriously? No, I mean, look at it. Montreal's travel website describes the city's signature smoked meat as a beef brisket that's often piled high between rye bread and served with mustard and a fresh dill pickle. Okay, I mean, Americans love their smoked meat. Don't question me. We love it. <laughs> so, this Montreal smoked meat, is that what we're kind of calling it? Often travel website. Montreal smoked meat. Looks delicious, and probably is. Rye bread, and served with mustard and a fresh dill pickle. Unlike New York-style pastrami, Montreal smoked meat uses the entire brisket, whereas oh. the NYC deli equivalent is taken from the much leaner navel cut. The uh -huh. spice mix is also different, with pastrami I actually didn't know that. <laughs> Uh, but, you know. Heavier on the sugar, and Montreal meat relying more on black peppercorn and other spices. Montreal okay. smoked meat is so popular that it's now popping up in many other culinary preparations, such as a top poutine and as a pizza topping. Oh, combo! You can, you can put the Montreal smoked meat with your poutine. Wow, that's a deadly combo. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. I'd eat that up. Many deli counters and restaurants in Montreal all claim to have the best version. It's a hotly oh. debated topic, but we oh. think the only responsible choice is to hop on a plane to Montreal and decide yeah. for yourself. I was gonna say, I'll sample it all. I'll sample all the smoked meats. I'll tell you what's what the best is. You just gotta give me enough. That's the only condition. Now this would be a lot easier to eat if I wasn't getting the stink eye from the gentleman behind the camera. Yes, I'll save you half. <laughs> <laughs> Jumping into the sugar-coated fun of the other delicious desserts on this list, Saskatoon Berry Pie is- Saskatoon Berry Pie. Now, I I'm gonna be honest, I'm not much of a pie guy. Uh, <laughs> that could be a song. I'm not much of a pie guy. You know? <laughs> so, I don't get too excited by these uh, berry pies, but this is certainly something Americans would enjoy. You know, a fruit, a fruity, delicious pie. Jumping into the sugar-coated fun of the Saskatoon. Is that a place? I feel like that's a place. Other delicious desserts on this list. Saskatoon berry pie is a regional trademark of Western Canada. The okay. tasty appeal of these berries, which grow from the plains to the coast of British Columbia, dates all the way back to their use. Wow! Look at those berries. Those are like the most whimsical, plump, juicy berries. Okay, I gotta stop <laughs> admiring the berries. By Canada's indigenous peoples. They were often ground into a paste and dried for winter storage. Okay. They've since made a name for themselves in the Canadian pastry world, and interestingly enough, they're protected by the catalog of foods known as the International Arc of Taste. Wow, you know, if I enjoyed fruity, fruity tooty, delicious, delicious pies, I would, I would like this. This looks good. Saskatoon berries are similar to blueberries in both appearance and flavor, though they're harder and have smaller seeds. They are wow. also drier and earthier in flavor. Sir so it, it is its own berry. Sask a Saskatoon berry is its own type of berry. 
That's why they looked kind of unique. That's interesting. Served in many Saskatchewan and Alberta pastry shops and confectionaries, the famous Saskatoon berry pie is made from flour, pastry, butter, eggs, and of course, Saskatoon berries. Yeah. Often paired with vanilla ice cream or whipped cream, this pie is a mm. Canadian culinary treasure. My Lots face. of Saskatoon berries, yeah. I Saskatoon berries, okay. If you grew up in the United States, chances are you know pea meal bacon as Canadian bacon. Ah, Canadian bacon. Isn't that just ham? Er, Canadian bacon is kind of a funny thing in America. You don't see it that often, yet every American is kind of aware of it. And whenever it's brought to some kind of a breakfast gathering, I'm like, Canadian bacon? What is that? Like, I don't know if I want to try it. Is it ham? Canadian bacon. What is it, Google? Wait. It's th apparently it's this guy. No. <laughs> what? Food. Food. Here we go. Cut from pork loin, pork loin from the back of the pig. Yeah, it's from pig. I don't know. Okay. Unlike its fattier cousin that consists of strips of belly, the pea meal variety is lean pork loin that's been brined and rolled in cornmeal. During okay. the mid-1800s, Canada would export its pork to England, which was experiencing a shortage at the time. For preservation purposes, the pork was hmm. rolled in ground yellow peas, which is where the name pea meal comes from. Ah, very interesting. I just realized, the reason I don't ever have Canadian bacon is because me and every other American is obsessed with just regular bacon. The bacon that come in the strips, you know? I don't know what you would call that. Do, do Canadians call it American bacon? Or just bacon? Or Now I'm just confused. Now that I've been forced to confront the fact that I don't know what you would call the, the, that bacon. Anyway, uh, before my brain explodes, uh, that kind of bacon is just so delicious. I'm always eating, I'm always just going to my comfort, eating the normal bacon. So that's kind of why I realize I never tried the Canadian bacon when it was there. Sad. Sometime later, the ground peas were swapped for cornmeal, but the name stuck, at least in Canada. For Americans, though, it will always be known as Canadian bacon. From yeah. Eggs Benedict <laughs> to baked beans, the possibilities for pea meal bacon are endless. And okay. you may already be a fan yourself, even if you're only just now learning about the correct name. Yeah. The classically Canadian Caesar cocktail may be a drink instead of a food, but it's okay. so often served with edible garnishes that we decided it was safe to count it. Wow, this drink is so darn good that it's included with the foods. Okay. Let's see what it's got. Especially since it's basically a magic potion for curing a hangover. Oh, Sometimes okay. Sometimes known as the Bloody Caesar, this drink is made of vodka, clam juice, tomato juice, spices, and Worcestershire sauce. My god. It's typically served in a highball <laughs> glass that's been rimmed with celery salt okay. and topped with any- Yeah, this'll get you, uh, <laughs> that would get you going. That would get you up in the morning. Holy. Number of garnishes. From celery to olives to lime wedges to pickles to even shrimp or bacon. There are okay. even versions complete with hot wings and onion rings. Oh, look at that. Give me that. All right. I'll try your weird little cocktail. If you stick a bunch of sandwiches in it and fries, sign me up. So make sure you have plenty of room in your belly. The yeah. Caesar really is a, uh, a, a national cocktail in Canada by parliamentary decree. The Caesar was invented <laughs> in 1969 okay. by restaurant worker Walter Chell, who was an employee of the Calgary Inn. As the inn prepared to open a new restaurant, Chell was asked to create a cocktail. Bacon! That's normal bacon, by the way. <laughs> the American bacon, there it is. No, that's just bacon. Just We're just gonna call it bacon. Tale ...to commemorate the occasion. In 2006, the Caesar was ranked number 13 on the CBC TV show, The Greatest Canadian Invention. Then okay. in two... Wait, it was the 13th best Canadian invention? Of all, of all inventions in Canada, it was ranked 13th? It must be a really, really freaking good drink. 2009, it received <laughs> a rather prestigious honor for its 40th anniversary, as Calgary Mayor David Brancagne declared that the Thursday before Victoria Day, every May, would be Caesar Day. Wow. Later that year, Canada Dry Mots launched an online petition to make the Caesar the official cocktail of Canada. And it would be a fitting distinction, as Canadians okay. order more than 350 million Caesar cocktails every year. Do places usually have a national cocktail? But you know what? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cocktail shame. Uh, if Canada has a national cocktail and it's this Canadian or Caesar, Caesar something, it's the Caesar cocktail. 
by all means, go for it. All we can say is cheers, but yeah. maybe hold the onion rings. Oh no, if you're American, put them on. New York is probably the first place you think of when bagels come to mind. And yeah. that would be fair, as the Big Apple undoubtedly has some of the best bagels in the world. Chewy, but never doughy. Beaut oh, make no mistake. I love a good bagel. I'm, <laughs> I'm getting too, <laughs> this is getting me serious. I love a good bagel. And uh, many Americans really enjoy a good bagel, so. I already know I'm gonna like this. Beautifully crusted with a glistening sheen, delicately tangy but never overpowering, mm -hmm. New York bagels have earned their glowing reputation. But upon further investigation and research, you'll discover that they have a worthy rival up north in Montreal. Oh? While the two types have their similarities, the main difference is in the cooking process. Okay. Montreal bagels are first boiled in water that's been sweetened, usually with honey, whereas okay. New York style bagels are boiled without the sweet addition. Montreal bagels. Probably just makes it sweeter, right? Probably pretty good. Bagels are also traditionally baked in a wood-fired oven, resulting oh. in a richer, more flavorful crust. Oh, heck yeah. Sign me up. Mmm, I'll eat all those bagels. I'll take all 100 right there. They're often a bit smaller than their sometimes massive New York cousins, and they're also traditionally eh, studded with sesame and or poppy seeds. Okay. Another notable difference is the topping choice. While New Yorkers and lovers of New York style bagels everywhere tend to top their bagels high with everything from cream cheese to fried eggs to lox. Yeah, I mean, a lot of cream cheese on our bagels, that's for sure. Ma basically anything. What do Canadians put on bagels? Canadians often enjoy their Montreal bagels plain, without adornment at all. What? What? What's going on here? Are we savages? Are we? <laughs> okay, okay. Just kidding. I've definitely eaten a plain bagel, you know, when the mood strikes me. But in America, a plain bagel, just eating a plain bagel, would actually be seen as strange. It actually would be seen as weird. So take that for what you will. With that delicious honey induced sweetness already baked in, any oh. topping would simply be superfluous. Okay, right, right. This has the extra flavor cooked in and the wood fired stove and okay, okay. All right, I get it, I get it. I, I'll eat it plain. Um, and so as a Montrealer, you come to develop this strong attachment to bagels. Oh, yeah. There are a lot of sweet treats on this list. And for that reason alone, we're having a difficult time stopping ourselves from booking a one-way ticket to the land of maple syrup. In the meantime, we'll be uh -huh. salivating over our next Canadian confection selection, the oh, tart yeah. souk, also known as sugar pie. So this, I can tell that's a French name, right? Tart au souk, sugar pie. Sounds like something I'd eat, sugar pie, you know? If anything with the sugar in the name, it's got me. Simple in all the best ways, this dessert happens to be a favorite of Canadian native and top chef judge, Gail Simmons. It's filled okay. with a mixture of cream, maple syrup, sugar, and- Looks kind of liquidy. What's going on here? <laughs> I mean, I'd still eat it. <laughs> uh, that's the thing. I'd still eat this, but why is it like wet? That's not the kind of pie I'm familiar with. But you know, when in Canada. And lots of butter been baked to golden perfection. As a holiday tradition okay. in Quebec, many French Canadian families consider the tart de souk to be an integral part of their holiday meals. Okay. Served at the end of a festive feast, a slice of sugar pie is often topped with a simple luscious dollop of whipped cream. Yeah, I said I'm not a pie guy, but this is a kind of pie I would eat. I actually, I enjoy this. Needing no further adornment. To paraphrase a certain classic Motown song, Sugar Pie Honey Bunch, you know that we love you. We huh. can't help ourselves. Check out one of our newest videos. Wow, all right. I think that's the end of the list. That was mashed. That was a nice video. Very nice, I like that. Uh, okay, well, I'm hungry now. <laughs> you got me. That's a good sign, actually. That is a sign that the video has been a success. These iconic Canadian foods that I need to try before I die, according to the title of this particular video. I'm actually kind of, I'm, I would happily die with some of these uh, treats in my hand or shoved down my throat. I'd actually, <laughs> I'd actually take that. But seriously, most of these actually seemed pretty darn good. And I mean, all of these basically don't exist in America, which is very strange. I wonder if there is 
things in America, pastries that seem so common to me that Canadians don't know about. Because I would, I would just think with all these delicious uh, desserts that were presented to me today, uh, Americans love delicious desserts, so I would think they would actually know about them to some extent, but I barely knew any of these besides poutine. So that actually really surprises me how that works. Uh, just being in a different place. I mean, I guess you can only have so many desserts. So I guess that kind of explains it. But if I ever went to Canada, um, I would try almost every single one of these, except maybe that meat pie. Ah, I'd get over it. I'd try the meat pie. Okay. <laughs> no, this was a good list. That was, that was actually very interesting. Anyway. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this reaction, feel free to give it a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this one, me reacting to Canadian culture, Canadian foods and things, stuff I've never seen from Canada, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, <laughs> thanks for watching and see you next time.